I need somebody, not just anybody. You know, I need someone. Help. Hello, gamers, and welcome back to the Beatles Ranked. Yes, I genuinely need help after after that terrible introduction. Anyways, I'm going to go over the Beatles. Help! Help! <clears throat> help! Help. Um, I'm trying to yell it out in a in a cool sounding way, um, but there's not. I guess there's not really many ways you can yell out for help and have it sound cool, except for in the uh, in the Beatles' Help song. Um, help. Um, the Beatles. Help. Um, help is on the way. Um, yes. So, I'm going to be talking about the record and the movie. Um, or film. Or picture. You might prefer, you might prefer that, those terms. Um, back then they were called pictures. Not really, not very many people say pictures anymore. Uh, unless you're extremely pretentious. But, um, you say film if you're just mildly pretentious. And you say movie if you're a normie. So I'm going to say movie. Um, help movie. I did watch it, and uh, I'm just going to say it is a freaking weird-ass movie, dude. I would not recommend it if you were a huge fan of the first Beatles movie, A Hard Day's Night. Um, I, would, uh, I, I would only recommend it if you're in for a wild, weird experience that basically makes no sense. Um now I don't know if this movie was like too intellectual for me or whatever, because there was there was a, there was still a lot of like jokes in it. I didn't laugh as much. Maybe it's just because I didn't get it. But um, this movie, the Help movie, was really wacky and out there. Um, and apparently the Beatles actually had much less to do with this movie than they did A Hard Day's Night, because in the in A Hard Day's Night they had quite a lot of input. Um, but in this one, they were, there, there was less of an input. This one, I think help the, the movie was a lot higher budget. Um, I'm just going to talk about the movie before I talk about the record. Um, this one was a lot higher budget because it had like more complex visuals and more locations. And it was, uh, it was obviously in color too. So that was nice. Um, the movie looked really great. I think that uh, Richard Lester or Dick Lester or, wh or whatever is a pretty great director. And he's, I think he was pretty revolutionary for the time because he sort of um, with this movie he kind of um, predicted or it was like a precursor to music videos and all the music sequences look really good. Um, and there's some great visuals in the movie, but like the movie is just all over the place, man. It's, it's really difficult to understand. Um, and not in like a good way, like uh, like The Shining, because um, sometimes you can have like a confusing movie, but have it work really well. And I think The Shining is one of those movies. Now, Shining is one of my favorite movies, and it, that's that movie is also very visual, but and a lot of parts of it don't really make sense. But that's heavily intentional. Um, I don't know if it was intentional for this movie to be crazy and all over the... I mean, it was intentional for it to be all over the place and crazy. But I don't know if it was intentional for it to not make any sense. Um, like, uh, mild spoilers, I'll talk about the uh, like the, the two scientist characters and the... Uh, I think they were supposed to be, like... They're, they're supposed to be an Eastern cult... That part was really weird and kind of dated because they I don't know if I don't know if I'd call it racist or whatever, but um, it's like really teetering that line being racist because like it's like a it's like an Eastern cult that like worships death or whatever. Um, it's not like super serious, um, but the I think like all of the guys playing playing Eastern fellows or Indian fellows or whatever, the, all of them playing them are white. So that's pretty, um, that's pretty sussy. Um, I think you could call it brown face, which is, uh, 
kind of an issue, but I don't I don't take it super seriously because the more egregious part of the part about the movie is it's just insanity. Um, watch this movie if you're into just being kind of confused the whole time. Um, if you like those type of movies, I would I would I would recommend it. But if you're a Beatles fan. Would I recommend this to like your average Beatles fan? Probably not, honestly, unless you just want to see the Beatles play their music and like engage in a few jokes. Like it's not it's not nearly as conventionally funny as A Hard Day's Night because A Hard Day's Night had a lot of like easy to understand jokes in it. This one, you have to be a little bit more hip uh, to understand what's going on. Um, I'm sure they were probably making a statement with the movie, but I don't really care that much. Um, it was, it was just rough. I gave, I gave a point for the visuals and kind of pioneering music videos, but I, I subtracted it for being, I subtracted a point for being incoherent. Um, so I gave it a five out of 10, um, which is not a terrible score by any means. Uh, it's just a completely middle of the road, you know, um, for me, it's pretty difficult to get below a five, uh, unless I actively dislike it. Now, I, it, it was pretty close to uh, being actively disliking it, but I, there is like enough jokes and enough entertainment in there for it to redeem itself to just a five. But I gave it a yellow recommendation. Let me just go over. Let me just talk about the films. Um, yeah, I, I, I added a page for the films. So here we are the heck what's with that scroll oh i guess um so a hard day's night i which i gave an eight out of ten an exciting funny sassy beatles adventure uh, i don't know if adventure is necessarily the best way of describing it but um yeah it's like uh i call it sassy because it kind of pokes fun at the beatles and uh they're they're definitely not playing themselves necessarily. They're put they're playing like way ramped up versions of themselves, and it is farcical and kind of nonsensical in a lot of ways. But I think it keeps itself grounded. Help is just crazy, man. A mildly funny, visually appealing, confusing mass of strange ideas. Um. Yeah, I I think this was this is probably a movie that I would m maybe like more when I watch it again. But it, this was my first time watching it. Um, I watched it last night, and uh, it was it was something. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's a movie that's kind of hard to describe. Even um, it's not at all like a hard day's night. I mean, it has the it has a similar style of humor, but it's not like it's much more farcical and kind of surreal than a hard day's night. And I, if you liked a hard day's night for its humor, I probably wouldn't recommend this movie. Um, this movie is completely all over the place. It's just it's it's kind of fucked. Um, but they. Uh, They go to a lot of different locations. I don't know why. I think, yeah. The Beatles said they had little to do with this movie, and it makes sense. I think it's just uh, the director or whoever trying to have fun and just film in, in exciting locations to have, or exciting or interesting locations to have visually and have, have them play music. Um, but like the, the Eastern cult stuff was just so weird. Especially in this time of the Beatles, because we all know that they kind of get influenced by Eastern culture um, later on. But this is like before that, which is interesting. But um, yeah, it's just freaking weird, man. It's just such a weird movie. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people might like that, which is why I gave it a yellow. Um but I don't think it's really my kind of movie. Um, uh, 
Uh, younger so much younger than today. But yeah, now to talk about the music. Uh, what I okay, so I might recommend a hard day's night if you're into really weird movies, which not a lot of people are, but there's a decent chunk of people. Like I um I watch Red Letter Media, and they would they would probably like this movie. Um. Just because they're into like weird, crazy B movies, um, but if you're just an average movie goer, I definitely wouldn't recommend this movie. And if even if you're a Beatles fan, like I, I would probably check it out just to see what's going on. But um, like I would, yikes! It's just really wild. I don't like that it scrolls that far, but whatever. It's it's because it's a cell. Um, I'll probably have to change that in the future. This is just some uh, interface or whatever that I whipped up really quickly. But uh, yeah, it's it's rough. A Hard Day's Night is definitely better because I would recommend that as just a gen for a general audience. Um, but for a general audience, the help movie is really hard to recommend. Anyways, 5 out of 10. Not too good, not too bad. Um, well, it, it is bad in a lot of ways, but I would I might have to watch it again just to appreciate it. But it's really rough. It's definitely a journey, um, to say the least. Then we have the record, Help. Help! Um... Which you can already see, I there's some really good tracks in this record. It starts off with you know the very iconic "Help" song. Help! I need somebody. Um, such a great opening. Um, and this song is kind of quiet genius. I called it I called it uh, quiet genius from uh, John Lennon. Now he wrote this song, and I think it was. Um, at the time, people thought it was inno innocuous or whatever, but um, it was like genuinely a cry for help. But it works. At, it works as a as just a regular song, and I think that's what that's what makes it work so well. Um, I gave it a ten out of ten. The first song to receive a ten out of ten in their catalog, um, at least as far as I can tell. Um, as far as I can tell, the first song. The first song that I listened to that I gave a 10. And I gave it a 10 because not only does it sound fantastic, and then it has a unique sound to it, the lyrics are just so clever and original and, and interesting. Um, and it's it's so iconic. And that's what makes a 10 out of 10, I think, is um, iconic and uh, significant. There has to be a certain significance and air to uh, to a 10 out of 10. And I think this fits the bill really well. Um, when I say quiet genius, I just mean it's uh, it's genius quality music, but is not really being like super upfront about it. You know, it's hard to explain. But I think you kind of get what I'm getting at. The next track, The Night Before. Um, catchy, good chorus, great Paul vocal. So this is one of those like Paul rock, Paul rockers. Um, but in in this case, he actually does have a really nice vocal. You were telling a lie. Um, and... Um, like the night before, like he he doesn't sound corny like he does in some of the other rock tracks, like uh, she's a woman a little bit and uh, Long Tall Sally, where he's kind of doing an impression. This one he sounds more original. Um, so I gave it an eight out of ten. Uh, green. It has a nice groovy sound to it. You've got to hide your love away. Um, I said, more Lennon greatness. Interesting lyrics. 
and Bob Dylan influence. Yeah, so the I'm not the first person to say that the Beatles were influenced by Bob Dylan or this was a Bob Dylan type track, but it definitely sounds kind of folky or folksy, I think is the proper way of saying it. Um um, I said uh, Lennon greatness because, and now the the notes for this were kind of haphazard. Um, I was just kind of typing them as I was listening, and I I really wanted to talk about the album right away after listening to it, but um, the uh, I had to still watch the movie. So that's why I talked about the movie right away. But I, I listened to it again today, and uh, yeah. Lennon Greatness, what I mean by that is just... Sounds good, obviously. Um, lyrics hit hard, or they're kind of original or introspective is a fancy word to use that I kind of got off Wikipedia that they said, but, um, introspective, interesting, obviously. Um, it's kind of in line with help, but not quite as good or, or as interesting, but, uh, greatness. What do I mean by greatness? That's kind of one of the things that I want to address in this uh, series as well, is what even is greatness. Um, something that's kind of hard to define. I need you. I'll just I'll just keep talking about the tracks when I when I have can I go blank or can't say anything more. I need you. This is a George Harrison song. Um, weird, distorted, out of tune guitar. Nice, sweet tune. Otherwise, shout out George. So, goes me 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 me. The guitar sounds really weird, but I think that was intentional. Um, and. Uh, this is just George being nice and sweet with these lyrics, because the lyrics are really sweet, but the music otherwise sounds kind of weird. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard. It's a harder track to recommend, which is why I gave it a yellow. But other than that, it's a seven, really decent. Then we have another girl. This is kind of on the same tier as the night before. Another groovy Paul track. Um, for I have got these sweeter than all the girls, and I met quite a few. Um, I really like that. It's nice and uh, it's kind of hard. Or um, what what would the word be? Uh, it's kind of uh rough or uh, I don't know gnarly for Paul usually it's John that does these type of tracks but um, Paul can definitely do that too um, it's in the very similar tier to the night before because not saying it's the same song but it's on kind of the same level which I like that's that's good it's called consistency <laughs> um, Consistency is different than rep than repetition or repetitiveness. Um, I'm kind of just going off the cuff here, but um, another girl. You're going to lose that girl. Um, Another song. There's a lot of song about girls. Um, interesting lyrical concept. Not all that interesting musically. So when I listen to this track, it's a decent enough track and catchy enough, but I don't know. I just didn't really like it that much. Um, 
I gave it props for the for the lyrics. Um, it's it's one that's kind of like uh, a combination of "She Loves You" and uh, another track like um, I don't know. Lyrically, it's kind of reminds me of like uh, you know other tracks that they've had before, like. Um, Like I don't want to spoil the party or something like that. That that has like a similar tone to where songs where they talk about not treating girls the best or regretting over that, and it's kind of like that, but in the um, third person. Um, you can tell that the Beatles are kind of changing at this point. They're kind of changing musically. This one has a pretty neat guitar solo. It goes... Um, but like the their sound is getting better, I think. It's getting more uh, unique. But, you know, you can definitely tell that they get a lot of influence from uh, guys like Bob Dylan. Um, I'm going to have to work really hard for reviewing the next album because I want it to be, I want the video to be good. I don't want it to be like this where I'm just kind of waffling off the cuff. Um, but I gave it a six with a yellow. Um, it's not bad. It's, it's not bad. It's just um, not my favorite. Um, You're gonna lose that girl. You're gonna lose that guy. Yes, yes, you're gonna lose that guy. You're gonna lose. <clears throat> um, not my favorite sound, but you can tell that they're they're kind of changing. Then we have "Ticket to Ride," another classic song uh, that a lot of people know. Um, the beginning is great. Um, I really like how the guitar sounds there, and the drums are really cool. This is like one of the first times where um, Ringo kind of goes crazy with the drums and does some unique stuff. Because or um. Um, it's hard to explain or hard to like visualize, but you get it when you hear the song. Um, you think I'm gonna be sad? I think it's today. Yeah. Like that part sounds so great. It sounds like, oh man. Um, and the lyrics are really cool and original, I think. Now, the the Beatles in their early days do have these songs again where it's like they're lamenting over a girl, um, or they uh, the relationship isn't going so well, and that's what that's what would be like an introspective song where it's more um, it's more interesting than just thank you girl you know uh, or like I'm in love with you. Um, but Ticket to Ride I mean it just has such a great sound um, I didn't give it a 10 because I didn't think it was quite on the same level of uniqueness as Help um, or even on the same level of sound but you can tell that the Beatles are they're getting up there um I should really prepare more for these, but it's it's hard to it's hard it's hard to talk about these guys, you know, because um, so much has been said already. Um, but 
but I, I like Ticket to Ride because um, not only is the guy, the guy says she's driving me mad, but is also, you know, sad to see her go. Um, which is, yeah, that's kind of like a classic, you know, toxic, toxic relationship. Um, really interesting. Anyway, that's it for side one. Side two begins with Act Naturally. Ringo! The Beatles do a country song, and it works surprisingly well. Um, um, I might bring it down to a yellow, honestly. They're gonna put me in the movies. It's kind of a classic country song. Um that fits Ringo pretty well. Um, they, this feels like a track that would be on a, a, um, a previous record though. You know, I feel like this is kind of a filler track and that's why I might bring it down to a yellow, but it's, it's not at all bad. Um, it's only love. Um, oh yeah, this one has like really awkward sounding guitar where it goes wing, 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 wing. Um, goofy sounding, cute lyrics from John, albeit generic and uninspired. Though a couple lines are interesting. Um, filler track. So yeah, I think this is a track that John Lennon really hated and thought was like so terrible um it is definitely like a filler type track where it's not quite as good as the other other ones but um it's not that bad it's only love and that is all why should i feel the way i do um yeah i can see why lennon would hate this but um, it doesn't sound completely terrible. It has an interesting sound to it. Um, six, yellow. Then we have You Like Me Too Much. I think this is another George track. Um, interesting beginning. Wait, let me just listen to this one again. Oh, yeah. So it goes it has um kind of reminds me of like a ragtime a little bit um or you know country kind of weird lyrics i don't really get what the um point was I think it's just another kind of toxic relationship and uh, s strange sound. Cause you like me too much and I like you. Um, kind of a similar sound to you're going to lose that girl or, you know, the other sixes on the album. Um, but, you know. It's it sounds weird and kind of off. There's just something kind of off about the track, but not too bad. Six yellow. Tell me what you see. Another really strange sounding track. Even if the vocals are sung, even the vocals are sung weird, almost sarcastically. Odd lyrics. Um. This is another one where I don't really get what they're getting at. Um, when I when I say they almost sung it sarcastically, it's like, "Tell me what you see. It is no surprise now. What you see is me." Yeah. So um, the the vocals sound. Tell me what you see. Um. The it's like a really weird. Lennon McCartney duet because usually the Lennon McCartney duets have 
a nice har harmony to them. They sound great, but this one is just really off. Um, I gave it the worst track, or I, I thought it was the worst track on the LP. Um, five out of ten with a red. Um, this is no surprise now. What you see is me. And like, just imagine, like, it sounds almost exactly like I just did, you know, where it's slightly off tune or whatever. Um, really weird. Um, I've just seen a face. Um, really cool beginning. I think it goes, it has, it, um, it's on the acoustic guitar, I think. And, uh, just go listen to it. This is a great track. Um, nice and sweet, fast-paced vocals. I've just seen a face that I won't get the time. He's going really fast, and it sounds really rhythmic and nice. Um, nice and simple. Um, I like a, <laughs> I said nice twice in this, yeah. Not very well-written notes, but... Um, Nice and sweet, fast paced vocals, nice and simple. What did I mean when I said nice and simple? Um, it's about love at first sight, you know. Um, this song is all Paul, so yeah, it, it's it sounds it's um I think it's just, it sounds like him, just him and a guitar, really. Or it, um, I think there's some drums in there, but I don't know who's playing the guitar, if whether it's him or George, but um, really cool sound. Another, another really solid eight. Um, it's in about the same tier as You've Got to Hide Your Love Away, just more Paul. Um, just go listen to it. It's a good one. Um, kind of a underrated uh, Beatles track. Um, and then we have Yesterday. Of course, this is a song that literally everyone knows. Um, yesterday. Um, all I said was Quiet Brilliance from Paul. Um, now they also had a string quartet or they had, they had some strings on this one, which sound really nice. I don't know who did the strings. I, I think it was, it probably was George Martin. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's really not much I can say about yesterday. Other than that, it was a 10 with heavenly, with a heavenly recommendation. Um, it's just, uh, really genius songwriting i think um but quiet you know or humble um modest whatever you want to call it <clears throat> it's like a it's like the other end or opposite of help um where it's um it is sort of introspective and and thoughtful but coming from a different person you know so whereas help is all John, whoa, give away the score there. Uh, help is all John. Yesterday is all Paul. Um, and uh, beautiful melody, obviously. Um, this is like the this is the first Beatles record to actually make me emotional, listening to it. Um, and that was more the songs in the record rather than the record as a whole. And I'll get into that. But yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Um, and it kind of reflects how quickly things can change and just completely do a 180. Um, just absolutely brilliant songwriting from Paul. It sounds so awesome and iconic. Um, yeah, there's really nothing more to say about it, um, that I can, that I can. Then we have Dizzy Miss Lizzie. 
Now this is a cover. Um, <laughs> really, really weird and funny to come after yesterday, which is like this nice emotional journey. Quite the switcheroo from yesterday. It sarcastically picks you up, picks you up from the emotional journey that is the previous track. Annoying guitar, booming, fun vocals from John. So the vocals are pretty good. They're nice and loud and and uh, bombastic. Um, you know, kind of similar to Twist and Shout. But uh, it goes... And it just keeps doing that the whole song. And it gets pretty old and annoying pretty quickly. But it's... Okay, so when I first listened to this record, I despised Dizzy Miss Lizzie because I thought ending the, ending the album on yesterday would be so iconic and fresh. And... Um, would have just been beautiful, but they, they decided to end it on Dizzy Miss Lizzy. Now, I think this was like a, a single or like a trash track that they kind of slipped on at the end. I don't know. I don't think it was the actual Beatles who figure out the track order. Um, I think it's like the sound engineer, whoever does the, the order of the tracks and they kind of just slipped this one in cause they had it. Um, so I don't think it was like an intentional pickup from you from yesterday, but as, as a track, it's like it was just really funny to me hearing this right after yesterday. I th I thought it was just freaking hilarious. Um, but yesterday to me is a very serious song, and like it is a little insensitive to have this come after yesterday. But uh... <laughs> just having yesterday. Or like, um, how how does yesterday end? Just this beautiful ending, and then it's and John Lennon just screaming. I thought it was just freaking hilarious. Um, looking looking back on it, it's funny, but like in hindsight, it would have been much more interesting and. Uh, iconic to have yesterday as an ending track to a record especially one that opens with help i need somebody <coughs> uh. Uh. um uh yeah to have a record that has such a um huge and loud opening to have it end with or close with yesterday would have just been so cool but they kind of ruined it with dizzy miss lizzie so that's just why I gave it a six. Um, it's a decent enough track, but with the dee -nee 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 guitar just constantly through the song was really annoying. And um, but the vocals are okay, um, so I gave it a six with the yellow. But I would, you know, in the context of the entire album, I would probably also subtract points from it. But like this was before albums were like meant to be cohesive projects and not just to sell records um overall i gave help a um seven out of ten um with a green recommendation so about on the same tier as a hard day's night just um a little bit lower um the average track rating, I believe, let's see, A Hard Day's Night was lower. Um, a Hard Day's Night had a higher average, but a lower median, which is really interesting. So what that means is there, there was just more variety in, in terms of tracks, because I don't think there was no track that was below a, below a seven in A Hard Day's Night. But in help, there was two tens and one nine. This is this is probably the this probably has you know the best tracks that the Beatles have done so far. But again, there's like this kind of filler crap. Like you're gonna lose that girl. Uh, it's only love. You like me too much. Tell me what you see, Dizzy Miss Lizzy. Um, and those are probably like the bottom five tracks right there. You know. But uh, the top five is just insane. Like, there's two tens. There's two bloody tens in this song, in this uh, in this record. 
um, and it's Yeah. Um, help is not nearly as cohesive a project as A Hard Day's Night, but it delivers halfway decent tracks as well as a few incredible ones. And that's what I had to say about it. Um, halfway decent tracks being The Night Before, I Need You, Another Girl, and even like the lower ones are okay. Um, but then the, the incredible tracks are the ones that everyone knows help Ticket to Ride uh, yesterday. Um, and even these eight out of 10 ones. And that, there you go. Like th this, is a, this is an album where it's really easy to pick out the bottom five and the top five. Um, and what makes A Hard Day's Night a cohesive project is, I believe, all the songs are written by Lennon McCartney, and there there is no there's no track that's below a seven, or there's there's no there's no track that's below a certain quality threshold. But with Help, there is, you know. And it's really interesting to look at and think about. Um, <clears throat> So the average track rating was a 7.429, if you round up. Um, and the median track rating was a 7.5, which I believe is the highest so far. The highest median so far. Um, help. Yeah, I couldn't really say this is a good album, right? Because I couldn't really recommend this as an, as an album. It would be harder to recommend because of just the roller coaster that it is, which is why I think it's why I think it's worse than a hard day's night as an album. It's just slightly though, because there are just such good tracks on this. This this album has help and yesterday. This album has freaking yesterday. And Ticket to Ride, I mean like it just this album has great tracks on it, but it also has crappy ones. <laughs> So, yeah. Now to rank them. I haven't ranked them yet. Uh, the sides. Well, I'm obviously dragging this up. Um, let's put that down. I'll figure out the borders later. Another girl. Let's see. The night before is yeah, pretty good. You got to hide your love away. There we go. That's side one ranked. Um, Help is just such a great opening track, dude. Ticket to Ride. I This is really close to a 10 as well, but I think you have to have a certain panache. You have to have a certain pizzazz, a, a certain uh, chutzpah or whatever. Um a certain je ne sais quoi um, to be a 10. And I think Ticket to Ride was missing that a little bit. And of course, Yesterday is up top. Um, I've just seen a face. Two songs that are great and written by Paul. Um, bring that down to yellow. Gone away this morning. I'm back again tonight. Um, I don't know what what is better. It's only love, or you like me too much. Yeah, I think that's fair. Man, I don't know. That's a tough one. Which is better out of these two? I'll just say it's only love. Okay, let's copy. Copy this. 
bring it down one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Yesterday. Oh, much. Oh, man. Picking help versus yesterday is like picking your favorite child. Like, there's no way to do it. But I think I'm going to pick help. Um, but yesterday is just such a fucking iconic track. I think they would be on the same tier. Like, it's impossible to pick whichever one's better. I've just seen a face that I won't get the time or place where we just met. Act naturally. Dizzy Miss Lizzie. I think I'm gonna put yeah, you like me too much better. I could I could flip flop these really. Man. Yeah, picking between help and yesterday, I mean that's fucking impossible. I don't know if I can act I don't even know if I can do it, but I have to. Because the song the songs are ranked. So I'm going to zoom out. Oh yeah, I actually didn't do singles because the next singles were actually released on the same day as the next album. So I'll do those singles when I review the next album. Beam it. Here, I'm going to pause it real quick. All right, get these. Go B. Tracks. Oh, man, this is going to be hard. <laughs> Let's see what the average is. Median. Seven. 6.7586. And it went up quite a bit. Okay. Let's take these up here. Okay. Um, I've just seen a face. And you've got to hide your love away. Not quite as good as those, I don't think. Or that. If I fell, eh. I think if I fell, it might be better. And I saw her standing there. Yeah, I think they're about here. That's good. You got to hide your love away is pretty good, though. I might rate that higher than I've just seen a face. But, yeah, they're about on the same tier. Um, anyways. Ticket to Ride. I think it's better than A Hard Day's Night, but not as good as She Loves You. Help is up top. Yesterday is also up top. They finally made better songs than She Loves You. 
All right, I'll have to um, expand it just a little bit because of the tens. La, da, 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 da. All right, I'll um That's good. Um singles. Oh wait, this is uh, more than just singles. Oh, I've got to rank the other ones too. <laughs> singles. the Beatles every single track every track ranked from best to worst oh geez okay here let me zoom out there we go the night before, tell me what you see. I don't want to see the freaking meme, whatever it is. Tell me what you see. It might be worse than Hold Me Tight, I'm not going to lie. That, that one... That one was... Um, was weird. It's only love, and that is all. <gasps> the night before, and another girl. It's definitely better than I'm a loser. Hello? Yeah, that's good. Better the night before is better than money. I need you. These this ones are gonna be hard as hell. I actually like. Yeah, I like these two better than things we said today. So I think I'll leave those there. Can I not fucking put up the taskbar, please? You're going to lose that girl. It's only love. I think it's better than these because at least they're at least it's more original. Dizzy Miss Lizzie is um, not as good as she's a woman. You like me too much. Not as good as every little thing. You're gonna lose that girl. Um. Better than every little thing. All right, well, that actually wasn't that hard. It's getting pretty uh, intense. There's a lot of tracks now. Um, wait, did the average go down? I feel like it went down. It's 0.79, and it used to be like point 
eight something, right? Two twenty seven C sixteen. Why sixteen? C fourteen. C fourteen to C. I'm just going to go C three hundred. C three hundred. Wait, whoops. C there we go, seven. There we go. Okay. Um that's where we're at for the songs. So many of them now. Now. Um Yes, yes, you're going to lose that girl. I don't know. Help versus yesterday. That would be such a great... Um, that'd be such a great single. Help and yesterday. Like, help on the A side and yesterday on the B side. Like, that. it's it's actually impossible to pick between these two. But I think if I had to pick one, it would probably be help. I think they're about the same length, too. Let me see. Help is a little bit longer. I think Help like is maybe better as a Beatles song because it just involves the Beatles more. It involves the whole band. But Yesterday is, I'm pretty sure, just Paul on a guitar and some strings. But it, is, it does manage to be better than She Loves You. These are all classics right here. I don't know. I feel like She Loves You might still be one of my favorites. I just had to give Yesterday a 10, though. I think that's good. That's nice and fair. Anyway. Wherever, okay. Wherever, or wherever. Singles. There aren't any new singles. Films. I already kind of went over that. Album covers. Oh, I actually forgot about that. Yeah, let me uh, get that real quick. Okay, I'll rank it as an album cover first. Um, it's a pretty solid album cover. Um, I'm going to put it not quite as good as A Hard Day's Night. I think I'll put it down here. Yeah, that's a good spot for it. I need to write notes for these. Album covers. Yeah, because like, look at this. That's just iconic right there. Not a very good album, but the uh, just all the Beatles. And uh, this is visually cool, but I, I don't necessarily like the bright white um, background and the red text. I mean, it makes sense, but... <clears throat> and as far as an album... It's going to be better than Please Please Me, I think. Wait, let me see. Please Please Me. Yeah. Perfect. It's going to be slightly worse than A Hard Day's Night. Um, now we're over an hour. 
stretch oh slightly worse than a hard day's night because it's not as much of a project like it the songs don't really connect as much and the the median is higher but there's just more lows than a hard day's night but there's also more highs so it's a really hard decision but i think as an album a Hard Day's Night just serves better. So there we are. I'm really excited for the next album. I'm, I'm excited to get to listening to this and uh, I gotta move this. There we go. copy so that's not there anymore um anyways easy i'm really excited <laughs> to get into the next uh albums because well i won't say anything um but yeah help there we are very interesting record i would i would strong i would strongly recommend it yeah well, strongly, I would recommend it, um, especially a few tracks on the record. But ultimately, just check out the blue ones. Yeah. And if you're interested in getting into the Beatles, check out the uh, green ones. And that's going to be my advice. If you're a music fan, check out the blue ones. If you're if you're uh, going to be a Beatles fan, check out the green ones. Why are these moving around? Anyways, I'll, I'll end the video here. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Peace.